In this PowerPoint, we're going to review how the values of k, our equilibrium constants, are calculated. The most direct way of finding the equilibrium constant is to measure the amounts of all the reactants and all the products in a mixture at equilibrium. These concentrations can then be substituted into the equilibrium expression to calculate K. This is exactly what we did in this example calculation from a previous PowerPoint. Here we have the concentrations of our two reactants, hydrogen gas and iodine gas, as well as the concentration of our product, hydrogen iodide gas. For each of the four trials listed here, the concentrations were measured initially, so this was at time zero before the reaction began, and then all of the concentrations were measured again directly when the reaction had reached equilibrium or steady state. These steady state concentrations here outlined in aqua were then substituted into the equilibrium expression to calculate the equilibrium constant. Now this is the ideal scenario where we're able to measure all the reactant and product concentrations directly. Oftentimes though, it's only possible to measure the concentration of just one reactant or one product at equilibrium. In those cases, we can calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the other reactants or products using stoichiometry. Let's discuss how you can do this. So you need two things. You have to know the initial concentrations of all the gaseous and aqueous reactants and products. So everything that's incorporated into the equilibrium expression. You also need to know one equilibrium concentration. It can be for a reactant or for a product, but you have to know one of those equilibrium concentrations. Let's look at an example. Suppose you have a general reaction here that involves two molecules of A, aqueous, so dissolved in water, combining with one molecule of B to produce four molecules of C. We measure the initial concentrations of our reactants, A and B, as one mole per liter. And initially, we have no product present, so our concentration of C is zero. We allow the reaction to actually go to equilibrium, and we're able to measure the concentration of just C. At equilibrium, it has increased to 0 0.50 moles per liter. So, in order to calculate the equilibrium constant K for this, we're going to have to complete three steps. First, we have to figure out what the equilibrium expression is that we'll use to calculate K. We can do this as long as we know the balanced chemical equation. In this case, we have uh, an equilibrium expression that is the concentration of our product C raised to the fourth power divided by in the denominator, the concentration of A squared times the concentration of B. Our second step will be to determine the equilibrium concentrations for all of our reactants and products. So for A and B in this case. And then we'll substitute all of these equilibrium concentrations into our K expression and solve. Our next step will be to construct what's known as an ICE table. So the I stands for initial concentration or molarity. The C stands for the change in concentration. And E stands for our final concentration or molarity at equilibrium, so the equilibrium one. We have columns here for each of our aqueous reactants and products, A, B, and C. And we filled in the initial concentrations we were given or that we measured in the top row and the one equal equilibrium concentration that we know for compound C in the bottom row. What we're going to do is fill in the blanks in this table. So we'll start with the change in concentration. 
And this simply represents how much the concentration changed and the direction that it changed between our starting point and our equilibrium. So we have to represent both direction of change and the amount of change. And we're going to start with the direction, which we will use just pluses or minuses to show whether the concentration increased or decreased between the initial and the equilibrium. So it, we know, we clearly know from our product C that we started at zero for the concentration and we ended at 0 0.50, so we had to increase. That's a plus for the direction of change. If we had other products here, we'd put a plus in their box too, because if one product increases in concentration, all the other products will increase too. By the same token, if the products increase, the reactant concentrations must decrease. So we'll put minus symbols in both of the reactant boxes. Now for the amount that they change, we're going to use the variable x. And we're going to scale it by the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. So for example, for every one molecule of B that reacts, we're also going to react two molecules of A according to the equation. And we'll form four molecules of C. Well, if we react X molecules then of B, we will also use up 2x molecules of A and we'll form 4x molecules of C. So we simply add the coefficient from the equation to our variable x to indicate the amount that we're going to change our concentrations in the second row. We can then define our equilibrium molarities for A and B as the initial combined with the change. So for example, we know that A starts at one mole per liter, then it decreases by 2x. So that's a formula of 1.00 minus 2x for our equilibrium concentration of A. B is 1.00 mole per liter minus x. And we can actually do the same thing for our C. We know that C, we started at zero, we increased by 4x. And what this implies for us then is that our measured equilibrium concentration, 0 0.50, equals 4x. And it's this last one that's going to allow us to solve for the other equilibrium concentrations because we can solve for x now. 0 0.50 moles per liter equals 4x, which gives us an x value of 0 0.125 moles per liter. We can then substitute this value of x into the equations we wrote for the equilibrium concentrations of A and B. For A, we get 1 minus 2 times 0 0.125, which is 0 0.75 moles per liter. For B, we get 1 minus 0 0.125, which is 0 0.875 moles per liter. And finally, we'll be able to take these equilibrium concentration values combined with the one that we measured for C and substitute all of these into our equilibrium expression to solve for K. And when we do this, we get a final value for our equilibrium constant K of 0 0.13 for this reaction. Let's look at another example. Here we want to determine the value of the equilibrium constant for the decomposition of methane gas into ethane gas, which is C2H2, and hydrogen gas at the temperature of 1700 degrees Celsius. And we've measured the initial concentration of methane at 0 0.115 moles per liter and the equilibrium concentration of our ethane gas at 0 0.035 moles per liter. And we'll follow the same steps that we did in the last problem. We'll write the equilibrium expression 
determine the equilibrium concentrations for all reactants and products using ice tables, and then substitute the equilibrium concentrations into our expression and solve. So for this particular reaction, our equilibrium expression is going to be K equals the concentration of ethyne, C2H2, times the concentration of hydrogen gas, cubed, raised to the third power. In the denominator, we'll divide that by the concentration of our reactant, methane, squared. We can use this to write our ice table, which is always initial change in equilibrium for our rows, and the columns we specify to the reactants and products that are included in our equilibrium expression. So in this case, methane, ethyne, and hydrogen gas. And we fill it in with all of the uh, concentrations that were given in the problem or that we measure in the lab. So we have our initial row filled in and we have the one equilibrium concentration for ethyne that we were given. And we're gonna next fill in our change row. We'll indicate the direction of change and the amount. So in terms of the direction, for our products, we start at zero. We know that we're gonna to have to increase them because you can't go to negative concentrations. So both ethyne and hydrogen are gonna be plus values. If we increase our products, that means that we decrease the amount of our reactants, so this is a negative. For the amount of change, we'll use x as our variable and scale it by the coefficients in the chemical reaction. So this becomes minus 2x for methane, plus 3x for hydrogen, and plus x for ethyne. We'll combine the initial and change rows to write formulas for equilibrium concentrations for each of these. So for methane, that becomes 0 0.115 minus 2x. For hydrogen, it becomes 0 plus 3x, which is just 3x. And we could do the same thing, same thing for ethyne. It would be 0 plus x, which is just x. And we know then that our x value is equal to that measured equilibrium concentration of 0 0.035. And we can use this last relationship to solve for the equilibrium concentration of methane gas and hydrogen gas by substituting x into those expressions. So for hydrogen at equilibrium, we knew it was going to be a concentration of 3x, so 3 times 0 0.035, which is 0 0.105 moles per liter. For the methane, it's 0 0.115 moles per liter minus 2x. So that gives us a final equilibrium concentration of 0 0.045 moles per liter. And we'll substitute each of these equilibrium concentrations into our equilibrium expression. And this gives us a final value for our equilibrium constant K of 0 0.020. Now we pointed out in a previous PowerPoint that we leave off concentration units in our equilibrium expressions. And this means that our equilibrium constants are unitless. They're also specific to the temperature of the reaction. So this value of 0 0.020 applies to this reaction at 1700 degrees Celsius only. If we change the temperature of the reaction, we would also change the value of the equilibrium constant. So in summary, equilibrium constants are calculated from measured equilibrium concentrations for gaseous and aqueous reactants and products in a reaction. And as long as the equilibrium concentration of one reactant or product is measured, the equilibrium concentrations of the other reactants and products can be calculated using an ice table and the stoichiometry of the balanced chemical equation. And equilibrium constants are unitless and specific to temperature.